Second Corinthians chapter three, as always, thank you so much for joining me as we begin a new week in the Word of God. We're currently engaged in a study looking at Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth, a, a church we, we saw, um, as we saw in, in Paul's first letter, um, that in many ways we're struggling, but, but there's been some bright spots. We, we've seen repentance thus far, but it remains, it seems, uh, some skepticism by way of Paul and his authority as an apostle of Jesus Christ. And Paul, he continues in our reading this morning to defend himself the authenticity of his message, his love and concern uh, for these brethren. This morning, I want to pick up in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm going to read uh, the entire chapter of this morning, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3. The Bible says this, Are we beginning to commend ourselves again, or do we need a, a, some letters of commendation to you or from you? You are our letter, written in our hearts, known and read by all men being manifested that you are a letter of Christ, cared for by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such confidence we have through Christ toward God. Not that we're adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves, but our adequacy is from God, who also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. But if the ministry of death and letters engraved on stones came with glory, so that the sons of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of the glory of his face, fading as it was, how would the ministry of the Spirit fail to be even more with glory? For if the ministry of condemnation has glory, much more does the ministry of righteousness abound in glory. For indeed, what had glory in this case has no glory because of the glory that surpasses it. For if that which fades away was with glory, much more that which remains is in glory. Therefore, having such a hope, we use great boldness in our speech. And are not like Moses, who used to put a veil over his face, but the sons of Israel would not look intently at the end of what was fading away. But their minds were hardened. For until this day, at the reading of the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted because it is removed in Christ. But to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their heart. But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. And the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, uh, the Spirit. You know, Paul begins uh, the chapter with questions. He asked the brethren if he and his companions needed to prove themselves again. Do you need uh, some letter uh, of commendation, de de defending, um, uh, so vouching for us? And he answered that question, certainly was no. Uh, this was silly. They, 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 they knew Paul, um, what he was about. They, they knew his authority as an apostle, as one led by the Holy Spirit. But no doubt there were those in the ears of these brethren, it seems, that were seeking to discredit Paul. And, you know, that's a tool Satan uses, no doubt, in an effort to discount the message. You destroy the messenger. We've seen this, and it's effective, um, I might add. And sometimes the messenger, um, he does this all on his own, and that's something else that we need to be watchful for. But that's not the case here. Paul had done nothing but good for these brethren. Paul says in verse 2, you are our letter written on our hearts, known and read by all men. He goes on to say in verse 3, being manifested that you are a letter of Christ, cared for us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Brother, let's stop here for a minute, because this is a beautiful and really, I think, thought-provoking picture that Paul paints here. This idea that these brethren were Paul's letter. And they're being read by all men, and they're created and made possible by Christ and cared for and cultivated by Paul and his companions through the preaching and teaching of the gospel. And this letter, it's not written with ink, but by the Spirit, and it's written on our hearts for all to read. Rather think about this. Paul's letter of recommendation had an author. It was Jesus the Christ. Paul didn't write this letter. He didn't make them Christians. Paul was saying, God used me to bring you to him. The Old Testament prophets, they, they look forward to a, a new covenant, a, a time in which God's law would be written on the hearts of, of men and women. A prophet, as the prophet Ezekiel prophesied, God granting hearts of flesh to replace hearts of stone. In Jeremiah 31, at verse 31, the prophet speaking for God, he, he, he told of a time. I, I want you to listen to this. Jeremiah 31, beginning at verse 31, Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, and I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah. Not like the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, although I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. But this covenant, verse 33, which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law within them and on their heart. I will it, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they will not teach again, each man his neighbor and each man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin, I will remember no more. 
no doubt a picture of God's grace, but also a picture of, of transformed lives, lives that reflect and, and show others the love of God and, and a love for God, people whose sins have been forgiven, uh, the law of God written on their heart. This new covenant, a life-giving covenant opposed to the old covenant um, that exposed sin. Paul goes on in verse 7 to contrast the two covenants. He says, but if the ministry, verse 7, he says, but if the ministry of death and letters engraved on stones came with glory so that the sons of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of the glory of his face fading as it was, how will the ministry of the Spirit fail to be even uh, more with glory? For if the ministry of condemnation has glory, much more does the ministry of righteousness abound in glory. For indeed, what had glory in, in this case has no glory because of the glory that surpasses it. Uh, for if that which fades away with glory, much more that which remains is in glory. We're not going to take the time to break everything uh, down here. But certainly what Paul is doing here is he's contrasting uh, the covenants. Uh, the covenant that, that we are living under, brethren, is glorious. Paul acknowledges that the old covenant it was glorious in its own right. Even though it was never intended to be permanent, it was intended to reveal sin. And, but while glorious, it faded away. Paul says what remains is even more glorious, the new covenant. It gives life in Christ, and it's permanent. It reveals the righteousness of God, as Romans 3 tells us, but also making us righteous before God. But not everyone saw it that way. Not everyone sees it that way today, right? Beginning in verse 12, Paul describes the Jews of his day. Paul describes them as, as veil. They refuse to, to turn to Christ. Therefore, the veil has never been taken away. They continue to look at the law of Moses, but they miss its very purpose of, of bringing them to Christ. You know, as we close this morning, I want to leave you with this thought. And, thought, and there's a lot here. I would encourage you to spend more time with this chapter um, if you're able to do that today. I want to leave you with this thought. You know, Paul, back in verse 2, he, he describes these brethren by saying, you are our letter, written in our hearts. And then he says, known and read by all men. Now, I think this is an interesting way of thinking of ourselves. You know, as letters to be read by men. And, and it leaves me with this question. What are the men and women in our lives that we encounter on a daily basis? What are they reading when it comes to our life? What are they learning? Do they see a life transformed by a risen Savior? Do, do they see God's law written on our hearts? Do they see uh, people whose lives are being molded in the image of Christ? Do they see Jesus? Do they see a, a life that, that works as it's led by the Spirit of God as revealed in His Word? What do they see? What are they reading? Something to think about, right? Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we, Father, we are so thankful for your word and all that it does for us. Father, as we begin a new week this week, Father, we pray that our hearts would be open, would be soft, that we'd be attentive to what we read this week, that we would apply these things to our life, understanding that your will is perfect, Father, that you only want what's best for us. Father, you've proven that, and for that, we're most thankful. Uh, Father, for uh, this past Lord's Day that you blessed us with, Father, we are so thankful. And Father, we pray that as, as we go out into the world this week, Father, that we would represent you as, as you would have us to, uh, that we would live our lives in such a way, Father, that it would prompt them to ask why. And Father, bless us with the courage, the opportunity to tell them our why, that being our love for you, that being your son who came to this earth and died on the cross. The forgiveness that we have in Christ, shed blood, Father, we are so thankful. Father, bless us this day. Bless those who are hurting. Bless those who, who are, are, have concerns in their heart, Father, as a result of loved ones, as a result of, of those struggling with health. Father, be with them. Bless us this day. In Jesus' name we